Okay. So for those of you who are curious who my special guest is today, say hi to Dusty Breeding. Hi, Dusty. So Dusty and I um, are both going to do this practice with you today. And what's um, what I've asked him to do and what he's going to do is um, demonstrate perhaps some variations on some of these poses. Um, I, I kind of mentioned some of them like during crescent lunge, having the knee up, knee down, um, adding a bind with the arms, refraining from doing the bind. And so we might be doing slightly different variations on some of these poses. And so if you um, want to uh, use either one of us as an example of something to try something new and different, or um, like I've said before, the great thing about uh, doing yoga on your own at your own house is that you can um, you can make it your own practice. And so if you want to dial something up, if you want to dial something down, um, that's the really beautiful thing about just exploring um, what feels great in your body today and what your um, what it looks like to expand your capacity or stay well within um, your capacity today. And so we're going to begin as we do with a breathing practice. And so um, I wanna give you a breath practice that you can um, start to bring into your own life outside of this time and space, outside of your time on the mat. And this is called box breathing or square breathing. And um, it sounds, it's a, a simple name with a simple concept. Um, basically the idea is that you identify like there are four equal sides to a square, I want you to think of your breath as having four equal parts. And so um, it's pretty obvious that we have an inhale and an exhale, but with box breathing or square breathing, we're adding a hold in between the inhale and exhale and a hold in between the exhale and inhale. So effectively there's an inhale, a hold with the lungs full, an exhale, a hold with the lungs empty. And then as we make our way around this box, we see if we can maybe increase the length of time for the inhale, for the hold, for the exhale. And so what we're gonna, we're gonna start with something pretty simple. I'm gonna start with a three count for each of those sections here. And so let's all together start with the exhale. And then inhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, Hold, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold, five, four, three, two, one. Last time, inhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to read to you, and I just encourage you to perhaps continue this square breathing, continue this box breathing practice, see if you can perhaps lengthen even more, um, maybe you can lengthen to a six count, a seven count. Something that's cool to think about is that if you are able to lengthen this to 15 per side, you're breathing once a minute. Now I realize you're probably not gonna get there today, 
but with practice, this is the sort of thing that you can see progress over time, increasing your lung capacity. And we talked about this a couple days ago, as you increase your capacity to control your breath, particularly your exhale, we slow down our heart rate, we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, we, we bring all those feel good, relaxing um, hormones into our body, um, which is something that we could all use right now. And this is something that is accessible to you at any time or place, right? You always have the breath with you. You always have um, your capacity to work on the breath. And it's not something that you need fancy equipment for. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's something you can do at any time or place. All right. So as you're breathing here, I want to read to you from the Gospel of John. And I think this is a very appropriate passage, not that Jesus was talking about pandemic, uh, but I think there's some interesting words in here that we can, we can take as encouragement to this time and place, even though, like I said, I know Jesus wasn't talking about our time and place. So these are the words of Jesus. A time is coming and in fact has come when each of you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone for my father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I'm going to read that last part again. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I love that because it's kind of like what we talked about last week when we were uh, reading Psalm 23, that when we, some of these scriptures, they don't necessarily guarantee that things are going to turn out perfectly. They don't necessarily guarantee that, you know, chin up buttercup, things are going to get better and like create a simple, uh, a simple response to a complicated question. That's not what Jesus is doing. He's saying in this world, you will have trouble. Things are going to be hard. I can guarantee that you will experience something difficult between now and the end of your life. And if you're not experiencing something difficult today, you probably will before too long. That's one of the few guarantees in this world. You will have trouble. But take heart, the words of Jesus, I have overcome the world. And that to me doesn't just broad brush remove the challenges that we experience. It doesn't just say, rub some dirt in it, you'll be fine, right? It says that even in the midst of those challenges, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be challenging. But take heart even in the midst of those challenges that even when things are difficult, it's possible, first of all, it's possible that things could always be worse. And if that's true, then it's possible to do things to make it a little bit better, to decrease the suffering a little bit. And so as you move through your practice today, I invite you to take the rest that you need, have this practice be what it, what it is that you need today. You came to the mat for a reason, and some of you came to the mat to get some breath practice, some of you came to the mat to get a stretch, some of you came to um, just get some social interaction too, such as it is. Um, and I invite you to uh, just let this be whatever you need for it to be. Um, let go of any expectations that you may have that that you're going to um, that you're going to do everything all at once here on the map. But maybe uh, maybe you pick one thing that you want to focus on, and that can be an intention uh, for you today. All right. So when you're ready, go ahead and press the elbows into the earth and pick the body weight up off your rolled up towel or block and you can just set it off to the side still be on your back and we're just going to start to move as we do with breath on your next inhale reach the arms overhead point the toes 
And on the exhale, hug both knees to the chest. Inhale to extend, reach. Exhale, hug both knees to the chest. Inhale to extend, reach. Last time, exhale, hug both knees to the chest. Inhale, last time, extend, reach. And you can just relax your arms down by your sides any way that's comfortable for you. And we're going to take what's called scorpions here on your back. And so what I want you to do is I want you to pick up just your right leg and draw it across your body to the left. You don't have to be able to touch the earth with it. This is just going to be a little moving rotation for the low back. So go ahead and bring it back to center. And we're going to go right into it on the other side. Pick up the left knee, take it across the body, and maybe tap it on the earth or maybe just lower it toward the earth and then bring it back to center. And now go ahead and take this away on your own time, on your own pace. You might need to negotiate a little bit with your neighbor if your mat is rolled out close to someone. But the idea here is that you're just dynamically warming up the, your hips, your glutes, maybe starting to mobilize the back here. And this is just a nice feel-good stretch to get started. Not finding any sort of outer limit. Certainly not pushing to any amount of pain. Just some scorpions here. All right, now go ahead and bring it back to center and hug just the right knee to the chest and grab hold of the right knee with both hands and supporting that knee, take some little knee circles here. Nice deep breaths. At various times throughout the practice, I like to remind you to come back to the breath and that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to uh, start that box breathing, that square breathing again, but it does mean that maybe you can Check back in with a nice, long, slow inhale and exhale. And go ahead and switch legs. Hug just the left knee toward the chest. Take some little knee circles here. Another thing to remember as you cultivate your breath here on the mat and as you're moving is to try to incorporate belly breathing. So as we go on throughout the day, chances are we tend to breathe with the upper half of our torso, with our rib cage and with our shoulders. But if you consciously bring that breath into your belly, so as you expand the belly with the inhale, expanding the diaphragm, you're pulling that breath deep into the lungs. It's a deeper form of breathing. And to be honest, it's how we breathe when we sleep or it's how we breathe when we're not feeling self-conscious about our belly expanding and contracting with breath. And so see if you can maybe incorporate that and practice that belly breathing here on the mat. All right, one last time, reach the arms overhead, point the toes toward the front, deep breath, full body stretch. And on the exhale, hug both knees to the chest. And if it's comfortable for you, start to roll up and down the length of the spine. But if you're on an uncomfortable hard surface or if you just don't love the feel, of rocking and rolling. You can just roll side to side. Dusty's demonstrating that. And then when you're ready, any way that's comfortable for you, come on up to a tabletop position. And we're going to turn around so you can see us from the front. Have your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees. You probably know what's coming next because you've done this before. Cat cow. Inhale as you lengthen the sternum forward. Gaze goes up. Exhale as you round the spine, tuck in the chin to the chest. Inhale for that back bend, release the belly toward the earth. Exhale to round the spine, draw the forehead toward the tailbone. And take it away on your own time, on your own breath. Three or four full rounds of breath, cat cow.
gonna come back to a neutral spine and next we're gonna take some side to side movement here. And so the spine can move in three planes of movement. It can go forward and backward. It can go side to side like a snake and it can also rotate. And so because the spine can do so much, we're also gonna warm it up in those three planes of movement. And so next we're going side to side. And so the idea here is that you're looking through your tail behind your back, right to left, draw one shoulder toward the hip and then reverse to the other side. Notice as you crunch to one side that you're also lengthening to the other side. And also remember that your neck is part of your spine. And so as you're moving, you're also bringing your neck into it and maybe even getting some nice stretching across the right to left side of the neck, which chances are you probably store a little bit of tension up there in the neck and the traps muscles. And so maybe think about also lengthening through the sides of the neck. And if that feels really good, you might also try some neck and head rolls here in tabletop. All right, now come back to a neutral spine and we're just gonna explore a little bit of rotation here. So I want you to pick up your left hand, inhale as you reach the left fingertips up toward the sky, maybe your gaze goes up too. Exhale, plant the left hand back down on the earth. Other side, inhale, reach. And exhale back down to center. We're going to do three more each side. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, reach. And exhale. One more each side. Inhale. And exhale. Remember your neck is part of your spine, so you're twisting your neck here. And exhale. One more little movement that I really love for the upper back that also explores the rotational movement is something that one of my friends calls a Komodo dragon. And so I want you to step your hands about mat width apart, so pretty wide, much wider than your shoulders. Bend your elbows so that your elbows are over your wrists, and now you've got a really wide stance with your chest. And then I just want you to try dropping one shoulder, then the other, right to left. Starts to bring a little stretch into the fronts of the shoulders here too. And kind of notice that, that gentle rotation in the upper back that you're exploring here. Starting to open up that space between the shoulder blades. I know for me, I'm feeling pretty tight up there. Probably because I, I might have slept badly on my pillow a couple nights ago. Any number of things. Drop one shoulder than the other. And remember to take those nice, long, slow breaths. All right, bring it back to tabletop. Now bring the toes together, step the knees pretty wide and settle the hips back toward the heels coming into child's pose. And now reach the arms forward and have the forehead on the mat. Okay, so there are a couple other variations you can take in child's pose. Dusty's doing one that I really love. If you walk your elbows toward one another, you're using kind of the sticky surface of the mat to create a nice little stretch and rotation between the shoulder blades behind the back. And then if it's accessible in your shoulders, if you can, press your palms into prayer, bend the elbows, and draw them behind the head any amount. Nice stretch down the traps, down the lats here too. Another thing that you can try in child's pose is to bring the knees together. A little bit of support for the low back here. And you can either have your arms reaching forward or you can have them down by your sides with your forehead off the earth. Ultimately, child's pose is just a really great resting pose. So any shape that you can take that feels like a good resting pose that you can come back to the breath, that you can get your forehead on the mat, that it doesn't feel like it's pinching in the low back or putting any undue stress on any of your joints, is the right thing to do. And by the way, if, you're, if your knees get bothered in child's pose, you can always flip over onto your back, hug your knees to your chest, maybe even get some space between your knees here for a nice hip stretch. Lots of options. So let's take a few breaths together in child's pose. Start by exhaling all the air out of the lungs through the nose or mouth. And now inhale through the nose, breathe into the belly. Open mouth, exhale, sigh it all out. 
Really nice. In through the nose, breathe into the belly. Fill the mouth, exhale, sigh it all out. And last time, in through the nose, breathe into the belly. And open mouth, exhale, let it all go. All right, so on the next inhale, bring it up to tabletop. And we're going to start to get into our side body here. So I want you to pick up your left leg and then straighten the left leg and then set it on the earth. All right, so your left leg is straight, your left hip is on top of your right, and in order to achieve that, find any rotation on your knee that's comfortable for your knee. So I like to kick my foot out behind me. Uh, so if, as you're looking at your knee and your foot, I want them to be in one plane here. So if you were to draw a line from your foot to your knee and then to your hand, they should be in one straight line. So the idea here, it's like you've got it's like you've got a force field down the whole front of your body here. You don't want to touch it. All right, so reach the left fingertips up toward the sky. Nice long reach, nice and strong down the whole left side of the body. And now on the inhale, imagine somebody's pulling you up by this top hand. And I want you to bring your shoulders up over your hips. And now on the exhale, we're going to reverse that movement into a nice long side stretch. Plant your left hand alongside of your leg, but don't put a ton of weight into it. Your gaze goes up. Should feel a nice long stretch down the whole right side waist. Inhale, bring the shoulders back over the hips. And exhale with control, lower that right hand back down onto the earth. We're going to keep moving in this side to side plane of movement here. Inhale, shoulders up over hips, activate the side body. Exhale, nice long side stretch. Gaze goes up if you've got your balance. Inhale, shoulders over hips. And exhale with control, lowering against gravity. Don't just drop down to the earth. Inhale back to center, shoulders over hips. Exhale, nice long side stretch. Inhale back to center, shoulders over hips. Exhale, lower that right hand to the earth. And just a quick pause here. This shape here is a great modification for side planks. So Jesse's not going to do this, and you don't have to do this, but um, a side plank would be something like this, where both legs are, are both feet, both legs are straight and both feet are on the earth. If you park your knee directly beneath your hip, this is a great modification for side plank because it's not putting quite so much weight on the shoulder. All right, take an inhale. And on the exhale, let's take it back to tabletop, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I want you to kick your right leg straight, stack your right hip on top of left, and rotate that knee. You can see our feet behind us now. It's off to the side. It's off my mat. And reach the right fingertips to the sky now. Imagine once again that you've got that force field, so you're not drifting forward. You're stacking your shoulders. You're stacking your hips. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, nice long side stretch. Gaze goes up. Inhale, shoulders over hips. And exhale with control, lower the left hand to the earth. Inhale, bring the shoulders up over hips. Active down the side body. Exhale, nice long side stretch. Relax the shoulder, the right shoulder away from the ear. Inhale, shoulders over hips. Exhale. One more time all the way through, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Take one more inhale, and on the exhale, take it back to tabletop. All right, curl the toes under, take an inhale, shift your body weight back onto the balls of the feet, and straighten the legs, lift the hips, take it back to your first downward facing dog of practice. So start by pedaling the feet right, left, right, left. Press one heel, then the other into the earth. So just kind of explore how your hamstrings are feeling, your calf muscles. If you've been getting outside lately as your primary form of activity, you may have been going on more walks lately. You may have been hitting the trails more than you're used, more than you're used to. It's possible that you're feeling tight in muscles that you don't usually work out, and that's kind of interesting and different for right now. All right, lower the hips in line with the shoulders, top of the push-up, and on the exhale, we're going to take it right back to downward facing dog. Nice, Jesse, I like that. Exhale. Inhale, forward to plank or tabletop. Jesse's showing what that looks like. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, forward to plank. One more time. And on the exhale, this time I want you to lower all the way to the earth. So the chest touches, the tops of the feet touch. Uncurl the toes. And then have your hands beneath the shoulders. Inhale, just peel the chest and shoulders off the mat. The gaze is forward, the neck is long. Exhale, chin back down. We're going to do two more cobras like this. Inhale, just peel the chest and shoulders off the mat. And I want you to have no body weight in your hands. You're using the muscles in the upper back to find length here. Exhale, chin back down. One more, inhale, cobra. And on the exhale, press it right back to child's pose. Any child's pose that's comfortable for you. And so child's pose is a great opportunity. We're gonna be here for about three or four more breaths. Child's pose is a great opportunity to scan the body and maybe notice where you might be holding any extra tension. So are you gripping your jaw? Are you gripping your toes? Are you gripping the muscles along your neck to try to, for some reason, take body weight off of your neck? The mat is there to support you. Practice allowing the mat to support you. Practice those nice, long, full, complete breaths in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth, paying particular attention to the nice, long exhale. Okay, so from child's pose, curl the toes under, take an inhale, and on the exhale, straighten the legs, lift the hips, take it back to downward facing dog. Okay, now we're going to take a lot of steps, a lot being the operative word, so don't just take one or two steps, I want you to just inch your legs forward to the top of the mat, and I want you to do this by keeping your legs as straight as possible. So it's going to be something like this, a little right, left, right, left, a little march to the top of the mat, lifting from the hips. A little dynamic stretch with the hamstrings. And if and when you need to bend your knees, that's awesome. Totally fine. Coming up to the top of the mat. And now all together, we're going to take a soft bend in the knees. Relax the upper body down onto the thighs. Slip your hands into the crooks of the opposite elbows. And just gently sway side to side. Nod your head yes. Shake your head no. All right, now release the elbows, bring the hands to the shins. Experiment with maybe straightening the legs as you inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the crown of the head forward, nice and long through the neck, active in the upper back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, to stand, sweep the arms overhead. You can either reach to the side or reach tall. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Even though you can't see our head and shoulders in this video, and I'll keep cueing you to reach for the sky with every inhale when you come up to standing. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. All right, couple more half sun salutations. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the crown of the head forward. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms, reach nice and tall, gather it all up. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. One more half sun salutation from the top, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. All right, inhale, arms overhead. And you're, you're not gonna be able to see me. I'm gonna do this from my knees so that you can see what I'm doing with my upper body. Dusty's gonna do this from standing, so I want you all to be standing, but we're gonna do some side bending, all right? So side bending and also a little back bend. So I want you to inhale, arms overhead, and then on the exhale, plant the left hand alongside the left hip and reach up and over, get a nice long stretch down the whole right side of the body. Inhale, bring it back to center. Exhale, up and over to the right, get a nice long stretch down the whole left side of the body. Two more times each side, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and 
and exhale. Inhale, one more time each side. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. All right, inhale back to center. And this time, you're gonna do a cactus arm back bend. So draw the elbows alongside the waist. Get a little back bend here. Inhale, arms overhead. And then on the exhale, I want you to hinge all the way down, bend the knees, lift the heels off the earth, and come into a little ball. And I like to have my hands on the earth for support. If you can maintain your balance while you're on your toes here, you might hug your knees to your chest. You might tuck your chin to your chest, and this is just a nice counter stretch, a little rounded shape um, to reverse that back bend that you just took. Okay, so we're gonna go through that same sequence again, except this time we're just gonna do one side bend each side. So um, as we're gonna do a side bend each side, and then a little back bend, and then we're gonna roll up into this little C, and then we're gonna do it all the way through again. So that's our flow, that's our standing flow sequence here. So, Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the crown of the head forward. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, nice long side bend to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, side bend to the right. Inhale, back to center. Cactus arms on the exhale, little back bend for the upper back. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, round into this little ball. Inhale, straighten the legs, halfway lift. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, to stand, sweep the arms overhead. One more time, all the way through. Exhale, nice long side stretch to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, nice long side stretch to the right. Inhale, back to center. One more back bend. Here we go, cactus arms. Open the chest toward the sky. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, rounding the spine. Keep the heels off the earth. Tuck the chin to the chest, into that little C. Inhale, halfway lift. And on the exhale, bend the knees, hands to the earth. Step back to plank, and we're going to take it through a flow. So lower all the way to the earth. Cobra on the inhale. Downward facing dog on the exhale. And stay in downward facing dog for a couple breaths here, in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. Since I've got Dusty here with me today, this is a great opportunity to demonstrate um, two different kinds of sun salutation, specifically two different kinds of taking uh, the vinyasa from lowering on the exhale. And so I'm gonna demonstrate chaturanga upward facing dog. Dusty's gonna demonstrate lowering all the way to the earth and cobra. And so this is kind of, some of you may have may have wondered, you know, like, okay, what are the differences between like, what's the back bend? What do they what do they look like? And so we're going to demonstrate two different options for when you take it through a flow or a vinyasa. If you've ever been to a class where a teacher says take it through a vinyasa, that's what we're talking about here. So um, from downward facing dog, everyone's going to lower into the top of a push up. Now another option you can do, Dusty's showing this with the knees down. Dusty's going to lower all the way to the mat on the exhale. I'm going to lower halfway. This is called chaturanga. So this is your exhale. Go ahead and lower all the way to the mat on the exhale. And then the inhale is upward facing dog for me, cobra for Dusty. And so notice that it's a back bend for both of us. The difference being, though, is that my arms are straight. And you can't see it, but my thighs aren't touching the earth. I'm only touching the earth with the tops of my feet and my hands. Right? So this is the inhale. Now on the exhale, Everyone press back to a downward facing dog. Dusty's going to use his knees for a little bit of help though. Two long, slow breaths in downward facing dog. We're going to do that all together one more time. And you can kind of choose your own adventure with this. Lower the hips in line with the shoulders, top of the push up. Dusty's going to lower his knees. Exhale to lower, either all the way to the earth or for chaturanga. When I go down to chaturanga, my shoulders go in line with my elbows. Inhale for the back bend, upward facing dog for me, cobra for dusty. Exhale, take it back to downward facing dog. All right, now go ahead and everybody lower back to child's pose because that probably tired out your shoulders a little bit. Two long, slow breaths, maybe make it three or four. Go 
go ahead and press the palms into the earth, curl the toes under, take an inhale, and on the exhale, take it back to downward facing dog. All right, we're gonna start to add some warrior poses here. Inhale, lift the right leg any amount, and on the exhale, step it through next to the right thumb, and you can heel toe it forward. You don't have to be able to do it all at once. If you wanna step it just halfway and then use your hand to, to lift your foot forward, that's totally fine too. Dusty's lowered his back knee to the earth. I'm gonna keep my back knee lifted, it's a little extra challenge, particularly for the balance, but also for the back leg. Inhale up to crescent lunge. So these are both crescent lunge with the front knee over the front ankle and with the arms overhead. Soften the lower ribs in and down toward the earth so that you're not stealing a back bend in the upper back. Spine is neutral, gaze is forward, neck is long. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, hands to the earth, step it back to plank and take it through a flow, your choice. Chaturanga, up dog, or cobra. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, left side, inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, step it through next to the left thumb. Back knee up or down, find your balance, inhale, Crescent lunge. Front knee is over the front ankle. Tuck the tailbone under for a little extra stretch right here in the right hip flexor. Elbows nice and straight, palms facing each other. One more inhale. And on the exhale, hands to the earth. Step back to plank, take it through a flow, or you can skip it, and we'll all meet in downward facing dog. All right, at the end of the next exhale, glance up at the hands and walk or step, or you could try floating your feet forward, hopping your feet forward to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Okay, so we're gonna try a little bit of a balance challenge today. Now that we've kind of warmed up our shoulders, we've started to warm up our hips, we've got the blood moving, we're gonna try a balance challenge here at the top of the mat. Now, I think I've probably said this before, but depending on where you're practicing, you might be on your living room carpet, you might be outside in your yard, you might be on a surface that doesn't feel particularly conducive to balancing, so don't beat yourself up if your balances aren't perfect today, all right? Because the circumstances might, be per might not be perfect. So take today as a moment in time. Some days are more challenging than others. And that goes for your balance, just like it goes for your strength, just like it goes for your flexibility, just like it goes for your emotional well-being. All right, so stand all the way up here at the top of the mat. I want you to shift all of your body weight to your left leg and bring your right knee up in line with your hip. Start by flexing your foot. And that protects the knee joint. All right, so if you're feeling pretty good standing here on your left leg, then you might try hooking the right ankle over the left knee and sinking into a little bit of a standing figure four. Now, the nice thing, again, about practicing this at your home or office is that there's probably a piece of furniture that's close to you that you can have or a wall that's nearby that you can use for a little bit of support here. Right, so you can kind of dial up or dial down how challenging you make this for yourself. So we're sinking into a standing figure four. I like to go hands at heart center. Some of you might wanna bring your arms overhead into kind of an extended chair pose here. Take an inhale and exhale, maybe sink a little bit lower into it. Rock your body weight back into your heels. See if you can maybe wiggle your toes. Make sure you've got your body weight in your heels. All right, all together, we're gonna to come out of this the way we came into it, knee up in line with hip and exhale everything down. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Shift all of your body weight to your right leg. Bring the left knee up in line with the hip. I'm gonna back it up a little bit so you can see Dusty. Left knee up in line with hip. And again, just check in with your balance here. Something I didn't talk about on the other side, but that really works with balancing poses, is that if you even think about your all five toes as rooting you into the earth, and so, Grip into the earth with your big toe all the way over to your pinky toe. Don't just have them be relaxed when you're standing on one foot. Have a really active heel, active in the arch of the foot, and then all that grip, all that, 
all that pressure, all that tension that you're putting into the sole of your foot is gonna chain reaction right up the body to a nice strong ankle, nice straight knee. Engage the quadricep to lift up on the kneecap so that this standing leg is ready to support you for whatever comes. All right, take an inhale, bring the arms overhead. And on the exhale, sink into your standing figure four. Just like on the other side, you can grab hold of a wall, the side of a couch, your neighbor, <laughs> all sorts of options here. All right, find your balance, sink your body weight back into the heel. See if you can find a little bit of, a little bit more length through the upper body, draw the shoulders back, gaze is forward, neck is long. On the next inhale, we're gonna come out of it the way we came into it with control and balance, knee up in line with hip. Exhale everything down. We're gonna do this two more times each side. We're gonna move with breath here. So shift all your body weight to your left leg. Inhale, right knee up in line with hip. Exhale, standing figure four. Inhale, come out of it the way you came into it. Exhale everything down. Right side. Inhale, left knee up in line with hip. Exhale, standing figure four. Inhale, knee up in line with hip. Exhale, everything down. One more time each side. Inhale, right knee up. Exhale, standing figure four. Notice that little stretch you're getting in your right hip as you rotate into it. Inhale, knee up in line with hip. Exhale, everything down. Last time, second side, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Okay, so now we're gonna incorporate this standing balancing pose in with a final little flow series here because it's fun to learn things, it's fun to learn tricks, and it's also fun to connect those tricks with other things. So have fun with this. Don't expect too much of yourself uh, because we're really here on an ex exploration, on an adventure together, all right? So, um, Sense of humor required. All right, shift your body weight to your right foot. Inhale, left knee up in line with hip. Exhale, into a standing figure four. Inhale, left knee up in line with hip. And now on the exhale, can you, with control, bend that standing leg and feel your way back into a crescent lunge? Nice job. So from this crescent lunge, just like last time, the front knee is over the front ankle, back heel is lifted. Take one more inhale. And on the exhale, take it through a vinyasa flow, your choice, or you can always skip it, and we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Two long, slow breaths in downward facing dog, in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. All right, this little sequence started from the top of the mat. So glance up at the hand, walk, step, or float your feet to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Shift your body weight to your left leg. Inhale, right knee up in line with hip. Exhale, standing figure four. Move at the pace of your breath and the pace of your balance. Inhale, knee up in line with hip. And can you feel your way into a crescent lunge? Step it pretty far back. Adjust your feet as you need to. Have that front knee up and or the front knee over the front ankle. Soften the lower ribs in and down toward the earth. Elbows are straight, gazes forward. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, hands to the earth, step back to plank, take it through a flow. All right, now lower the knees in line, down to the earth, coming into tabletop. I'm just gonna take it through a couple rounds of cat-cow here. So forward, backward, flexion of the spine. We're gonna slow this way down, do a couple little mat stretches, and then finish out with a Shavasana here.
If you do have to make your exit before one o'clock, I just want to remind you that we'll be back on Wednesday at 5.30 for more yoga, Wednesday 5.30, Fridays at noon. I'm going to keep this going as long as this quarantine goes on. And so, you know, I'll be here on, on your laptop, on the internet, Wednesdays at 5.30, Fridays at noon. You're always welcome. Okay, so after you've kind of worked that out with a little bit of cat cow, a little bit of mobility in the upper back, we're gonna take a nice, um, a nice twist for the upper back now. So pick up the left hand, reach left fingertips up toward the sky, kind of like we did at the beginning of our practice. And then on the exhale, I want you to reach under and through toward your neighbor to the right. And the idea here is that I want you to settle your shoulder and maybe even the side of your face down onto the earth. Now you've got options here your rolled up towel that you used before, you could always use this as a little landing pad for your shoulder and your head. And another thing that you can do, Dusty just demonstrated it, with your free hand, you can try walking it forward and away from you on the mat. It just increases a little bit of a stretch down his lat, down his side body. Another thing he can do, Dusty, you can do this if you feel good about it, is you can re he's going to reach his right arm up and around and he's going to try to catch his left inner thigh, right? So this just kind of encourages more of a twist here across the back. If you feel like you're turning into a pretzel or you just can't figure out how to, like, which arm to twist, don't worry too much about it. <laughs> Maybe just relax your hands down onto the earth and you're doing it right. Basically, you're using the floor to encourage your upper back into this nice twist here. And I know it's not very easy to breathe in a twist, but do what you can. Maybe this will constrict the volume of your breath, but try not to let it constrict the length and the calmness of your breath. Be here for a couple more breaths. All right, go ahead and slowly press back up out of it with your, using your hands to press into the earth. And to neutralize before we just go right into it on the other side, we're gonna take that Komodo dragon that we did at the beginning of practice. So step your hands pretty wide, about mat width apart, bend the elbows and drop one shoulder then the other, right to left. It's a nice organic rotation for the upper back here. Just neutralizing those muscles there's a lot going on up and down your spine, so sometimes it's worth paying a little extra attention, a little extra PLC for all the connective tissue, everything that's going on in your back. Okay, so come on back to tabletop, setting up for the other side. So I want you to pick up your right hand, inhale, reach the right fingertips up toward the sky, and then on the exhale, reach it under and through toward your neighbor to the left. Settle the side of your face, your shoulder down on the earth. And then you can see it on me now a little bit better. With this free hand here that's just supporting me, I'm going to walk it forward. And the idea here is that it just pulls the stretch down this lat. And if you want to explore on this side, this same arm that you walked forward that's just hanging out, you might try reaching it up toward the sky and find the wrap around the backside waist. If you find the wrap, really it's just kind of encouraging your shoulder up into this twist, a little bit of a stretch across the front of the shoulder, that front deltoid there. These longer holds, these longer stretches here on the mat are just a great opportunity, again, to scan the body. Notice what notice what you're clenching notice what you're gripping that awareness of the body is the sort of thing that you can cultivate here on the mat but is the sort of thing that as you practice it here as you discipline that it can follow you into every moment of your life and become second nature all right go ahead and inhale and wind and slowly press the palms into the earth to bring it right back up to tabletop. And this time to neutralize, we'll take it through a few rounds of cat cow, forward, backward, flexion of the spine.
right, now go ahead and bring your legs around in front of you. We're just gonna get right into our final resting pose of the day, a little Shavasana. Um, traditionally, Shavasana is a pose where you lie down on your back with your arms and legs straight. Uh, but it's really up to you based on injuries that you've had or just where you find comfort. Shavasana is any resting pose for you. So if you want to do a seated Shavasana, if you want to do a side Shavasana, if you want to do a belly Shavasana, you can really take any pose that's comfortable for you as long as you can close your eyes, as long as you can breathe, and as long as you can truly rest in that pose and in that shape. So go ahead and get there um, into your resting pose and then all together before we just drop right into it, I'm gonna take it through a couple more rounds of square breathing. So I'm gonna count us out. It's a little easier for me to project so you can hear me. So I'm gonna stay seated while I count us out here. I'm gonna take us through just three full rounds of square breathing. So start by exhaling all the air out of the lungs through the nose or mouth. And then all together, let's inhale. Five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, Exhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one. Now just let your breath take its own time, its own pace, find a natural, even, effortless rhythm for your breath for these next couple minutes. Shavasana.
And then on the exhale, roll over to one side. And then slowly press the earth away. Make your way back up to a comfortable seated position, whatever that looks like for you. Close your eyes when you get there. Lightly rest your hands on your knees. Come back to your breath. I'm going to finish out with one more reading of that same passage. <clears throat> From John 16. The time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. On the next inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through this practice. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.